Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video, let us try to make use of the WebFlux components like MonoFlux and WebClient. As of now, there is reactive repository support for MongoDB, Redis and Cassandra. In this video, let us see how to configure this reactive Cassandra repository and use it with the WebFlux components. Alright, let's create a project first. I'm going to go to File, New, Spring Startup Project. Uh, give a name for your project and click on Next. And here, type in Reactive. You could see what are the different reactive components available for you to use. And looks like there is a new support for Couchbase also. So here, we are going to select Reactive Cassandra and then click on Finish. Let me quickly open up the pom.xml. So here's our reactive Cassandra dependency added. So now let's go and configure the other items like controller, model, etc. So let's annotate with other table. And then this is going to be our primary key. All right, so our model is ready. Now let's go to our repository. Let's create a repository. It's going to be an interface. So this is the one that we need. Okay, it's going to be of type student and the teacher. Because that's our primary key. Uh, let's try to create an opinionated uh, you know method signature here. Let's say that's going to be student find by age say a local time right so our repository is ready now let's go to a controller We are missing a difference here. Let's add the flux dependency. Sorry, guys, looks like we missed a dependency. We have to add the web flux dependency here. So now let's go and got the import here. Cool. 
Alright, uh, let's auto add this student repo. And then let's have a get mapping, which is going to be You can use mono when you want to return either zero or one element in it. So you're going to find by ID and definitely it's going to return only one element. Now let's try to implement a flux uh, example. Let us say uh, I want everyone. Alright, so we have two examples, one is for mono and the other is for flux and let us write an implementation for our custom. Alright, so we have three examples here. Uh, so before we run, uh, when we start our example, we need to feed uh, data into the database. So for that, let me try to uh, given some default values.
So we have our data. Uh, let's go to our application properties. The free dynamic. I feel a lot comfortable working with YAMLs than property files. So I always do this. I change my application properties to YAML. Um, the default port is always 9042 and then we have to mention one more thing that is going to be your key space name uh, my key space name is going to be uh, reactive Cassandra I think so let's let's check that all right <clears throat> so we have the you know the application level setup done let's go to our Cassandra database all right uh, Okay, let's create a table. Our table is created so now let's go and run this project I'm sorry I completely missed something here so let me add it here application has been started now let's try to you know run this example let's try to you know see whether this, these things are working fine or not all right so let's now try to test this okay let us do our first uh, filter by uh, ID and we got the data here and now let's try to filter by age greater than uh, let us say 14 for now and we got two records here so we have Jack whose age is 16 and Mary whose age is 15 and then let's get try to get all the records so we got all the records now so that's how you make use of the uh, reactive Cassandra repository with Spring Phi components. So uh, let us try to you know consume our you know REST web services using the web client. So for this, right, I created a simple Spring Boot uh, reactive project. So let me quickly show you the pom.xml. There is only one dependency that is going to be our web flux dependency, and then I have a controller uh, which is going to return our flux. Of student elements in it and I have a consumer service uh, which is going to have the implementation of the web client so this web client is very similar to the rest template that we have now uh, you can use this to call the remote rest services but this is more aligned to work with spring reactive component so this is fully reactive and gives you a functional field to work with so what I did is like I created a web client uh, which is going to be of localhost 9001 and then I'm going to hit the students slash all uh, endpoint and I'm going to retrieve the data and you know uh, send it to the controller and send it back to the end user so let's try to run this example and let's try to see what is the output that we get all right the server is up and running and now let's go to our postman and let's fire the URI So I'm going to use port 9002 and when I did that I got the results from the other server which is port 9001. So let me quickly show you something uh, you know uh, interesting. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stream this data. Okay, I think the better place to do this is, let's go to the consumer and delay this by I'm going to delay this data by one second. And then in our controller, let me go to produce. Uh, you can either have a, a text event stream or a JSON value stream. Uh, I'm going to use a JSON value stream in this case. And let's let me quickly stop the server and start it again. Okay, the server is up and running, and let's go to a command prompt and let's do a curl here. Now the data is going to be stream as an output. So you'll see this now. So you could do you see this? Every second the data is now streamed. So this is this is another example of you know how to use efficiently the Spring Reactive components for streaming your data to the end user. So I hope this example was really helpful, and please subscribe for more such videos. Thank you, guys.